Who said it was a good idea to bring Neanderthals back? Unless you need medical attention or you're here to report a crime, you need to leave. What is up, people? How in the f is it going? I am black and backer than ever. What? Welcome to the Dynamite Gizmo Podcast, everyone. Episode 205. Episode 205. I wrote it down wrong. It's not 204. It's 205. We're at 205 already, people. <laughs> Come on. Uh-oh. Guess what? I didn't make a card. Here's today's card. It's tradition around here to show you the card, but it's not tradition to show you it's on the card, but you'll find out anyway, because we'll talk about it. I didn't make one. You want to know why? Because I have a an online card on the on the old computer screen. I don't need this anymore, but I it's hard for me to stop doing this because I've made so many. Look at this. Look at this stack. This is every single episode of the Dynamite Gizmo podcast. Every single episode. I think I need to tilt my camera up a little bit. Let me just let me just do that right now. Let me just let me just How's that? <laughs> just ever so slightly. Where's 203? We got 202, 201. Where's 203, 204? Are we on 204? Hold on. I could have sworn I made... What the hell? 201, 200. I don't even see 199 here. What the heck? Oh, there's... Wait a minute. They're kind of all over the place. I don't see one. I think I'm missing some. Oh, well. Who gives a goddamn? Who, do we really need to keep those? Right? Here's today's card. It's just around here to show you the card. I'm just going to write nothing. How's that look? You see that? You see that camera guy? It's hard to, I can hear my voice echoing and it's hard not to, it's hard to be quiet. I mean, it's hard to be loud when you want to be, when you want to, when you, when you, when you go and want to be quiet, but you got to do what you got to do, people. French vanilla cream pies. Am I right? It's been beep, boop, 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 beep. Parking pie. Parking pie. Parking pie. Parking pie. So today, as always, we got the top three fucking podcasts of the week, and they and here's what I've come to th think to myself: I'm not going to limit the three podcasts of the week to just simply the podcasts that have been put out in the previous week. Sure, there will be one. Sure, there will be one here and there, and probably for the most part, there will be podcasts that I will include in the top three from throughout the week. But they're not, it doesn't always have to be limited to that. I can do what I want. You want to know why? Because this is... Not a fuck you, what do you need, or nothing. My podcast. I do what I want. Because the goal of this podcast is, well now, since last episode, is to bring more awareness to podcasts in general. Because as you know, because as it is, as I am, all I do is watch and listen to podcasts, poop casts. So I want to share the magicalness of them. And I want to give people an opportunity to watch them and be like, oh my God, they're so great. And understand the way that I feel about them. Okay? So I will provide my favorite episodes along with episodes that have recently been released and episodes that have been released whenever 
I'm not trying to steal people's content and re-upload it and use it as myself, as my own. Peace for mankind! As people may come to think that that is what I'm doing, no. I'm taking minuscule amounts, clips of people's podcasts, and sharing them on this podcast, and spending the majority of the time on here talking about them and why they're so great, and ranking them in a top three selection. Oh, buddy. Okay? So, eat my arse if you don't like it. Anyway, so in podcast news, I just need to, I just need to uh, uh, establish that Howie Mandel and Harlan Williams, as you know, Harlan Williams was in the second place spot and in the honorable mention last episode for being on Joe Rogan and Kill Tony. And now I come to find out this week, actually, that Harland Williams and Howie Mandel have a new fucking podcast coming out July, I don't know when, probably July 1st, who knows, but they said it's coming out in July. It's called When a Stranger Calls, and it's about, it's them, it's Howie and fucking Harland together calling strangers, calling fans. And having discussions with them about stuff. I don't know, but they're both being them their goofy selves. And it's gonna be fucking awesome. Cause as you cause Howie even Howie Mandel was in last week's top three when Sal Volcano was on. So what's what what a fucking coincidence that now this week we've got Howie Mandel and Harlan Williams combining together to create their own fucking podcast called When a Stranger Calls. And I should have lined up the fucking trailer for it. But guess what? I didn't. So actually, I could just do it right now. Okay, here is the trailer for When a Stranger Calls. It's called When a Stranger Calls. I'll show Thanks. you a little clip. Just said this that, Howie. This isn't going to start until July. Watch this clip. Hello? 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 When a Stranger Calls. Should we take a call? From who should we take a call? A stranger. Hi, Jim. Howie, do you remember me? Uh oh. Dude, oh my god, I can't believe I'm like oh. talking to Carolyn Williams. Okay. What? Um, <laughs> yeah, so. Do you guys live at WeHo or? You can pull it down with your fingers. Just pull your lower lip down. Yeah. There we yeah, go. There, there we go. go. I think he's got gingivitis. Oh, wow. wow. <laughs> no, no! Oh, no! Yeah. yeah. Oh, <laughs> you want me to really wake up my son who's 11 years old? Yeah. Here we yeah. go. He's like, here we are. Caleb. What's the meaning of life? <laughs> Any answer, Caleb? When a stranger calls. <laughs> so that's kind Hey? I mean, that should be pretty good, right? They're just calling uh, random poips. And uh, I don't know. I don't know what they're doing. I guess they're just goofing around. Being a bunch of goofs. And I'll also, I got one other thing to mention in stand-up comedy news, which I had no fucking idea about this until I was scrolling on the old talk. And I come to find out that motherfucking Hank Green, Hank Green, all right? The fucking... OG YouTube legend, the science guru, th the people everybody goes to on the internet to answer science questions, created fucking, uh, what is it called? The first YouTube fucking gathering, whatever. Him and his brother, you know, he does fucking stand up, dude. Hank Green does stand up. And I've only seen clips of it. I have not seen the full special. I want to really badly. But I think it's only available on this weird streaming platform called Dropout. And it's like, man, I don't want to subscribe to another thing. I don't even know what Dropout is. But I, I want to see it. I might still, I might consider it because just from this clip alone, 
I'm like, oh, fuck, this is good, dude. This is good. And remember last episode I said when you watch stand-up comic, when you watch stand-up comedians in their podcast form and then try to watch their stand-up special afterwards, it kind of taints it. So I'm seeing Hank Green pretty much fresh in his stand-up special context. So it, it's not tainted. So that allows me to go into it open-mindedly and uh, fresh. All right. But that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be a good stand-up special. But from this clip alone, I'm like, oh, my God. This is actually fucking legit comedy, legit stand-up comedy, and it's actually good. He's got a great premise. He's got a great delivery. And the way in which he forms the joke is fucking awesome. I love that he's doing this, and I want to see more. I was like, well, what about the cloudy pee then? He said, oh, well, that's the cancer. And I said, what? <laughs> The cancer makes your pee cloudy? And he said, no, that's the cancer. Like, the, the chemotherapy kills the cells. Like, they explode, and then all their, like, lipids and proteins end up in the space between your cells. That gets picked up by your lymphatic system and then dumped into the circulatory system and then filtered out by your kidneys and put into your bladder, and then you pee it out into the toilet. And I was like, duh. You got to tell people about that. <laughs> you got to tell people about that. That's very empowering. That's extremely, you're telling me that like when I see the cloudy pee, that I, I'm succeeding at killing cancer? And then I flush it into the sewer where it belongs? Like everybody who's taking chemotherapy or doing radiation should like, get out of bed, but they should stand up to pee, and they should do it like this. Ah! <laughs> I don't care what equipment you have, you can figure it out. Right? It's not bad, right? There is more clips of him, but we don't need to show them all, all right? Because apparently I'm just stealing people's content and re-uploading it. I, fuck it. Who, yeah, whatever. You know what I'm trying to do here, whether you do or don't. Listen, the goal of this podcast from here on out is to bring awareness of fucking other podcasts, all right? It's fine. It's fine. Don't be a shit eater, okay? I love podcasts. Yes, I do. I love podcasts. How about you? <laughs> Last episode was also a bit too long. Are you going Croissant? to finish that? There's nothing wrong with a long podcast. Don't get me wrong. Croissant? Are you going it's to finish that? There's nothing wrong with a long podcast. Pongcast. <laughs> What's a, a pongcast? is a podcast about ping pong balls. Do you feel that? Wouldn't that be nice? That would probably be a shitty one. Now I feel like my camera's too high. It might be tilted too much. Hmm. Maybe I should tilt it back. Hold on. That's perfect, right? I think. I've been playing Fallout New Vegas lately. I just got it. I said to myself, I need a new game to play. You guys got any back? <laughs> so, but I, it's been a while since I've been playing a game. I know I have been playing Super Mario 64 on, 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 on my... <sighs> Like, I've been streaming it on this YouTube channel, but it's not cutting it. And I do plan on continuing to stream it, but I probably won't. Because it hasn't... I, I don't know, man. Streaming video games? I don't know how I feel about it. And it hasn't really, like, clicked with me. But I started playing Fallout New Vegas, and I'm not going to stream it. Because I like playing games like that. I like playing those kind of games and just being very immersed in them. Looking at every little detail, reading every little thing, talking to every character, opening every chest, every box. And I want to do that without talking 
to a camera in a microphone to an audience of nobody, <laughs> you know? So that's why I want to play games like Super Mario 64 on the stream where I don't have to put much focus into it. But anyway, I've been started playing Fallout New Vegas and I'm loving it. I'm very late to the train, but the reason why I got it is because, well, it was so cheap. It was like 26 bucks for the game plus every single fucking piece of DLC. So I'm going to play that and then probably Fallout 4 afterwards. You can't tell me what to do. Fuck you, dude. Fuck you. Okay, guys, let's do some dancing. Let's show me my moves. Okay, folks, are you ready for the third place winner of the week? For those who don't know or haven't been listening, the, I uh, have a scale here, as you can see. First, second, and third place, plus an honorable mention. I like to uh, discuss and review the top three podcasts of the week, according to me. Okay? Now, they are not the top three that have just been recently released. They can be the top three, whatever. I just pick three podcasts, put them on a scale. One does not have to be better than the other, but maybe they are. Who f Cut that out. So this is the scale. Huh. Not feeling it today. Not feeling it today. Okay, people, so who's ready for the third place winner of the week? We got the top three selection of the podcast of the week. Third place winner goes to... Oh, this is a good one. We got Matt and Shane's Secret Podcast featuring Louis C.K. These are episodes 393 to 396, The Presidents, okay? It is a series of four parts where Louis C.K., uh, um, Shane Gillis, and Matt McCusker talk about the presidents of the United States in sequential order from the first one all the way to the current one at that time. And at first glance, you, you're going to look at this and you're going to be like, what the fuck? This sounds boring as shit. And believe you, believe me, I thought the same. I thought the same thing. Going into it, I'm like, this is going to, this is boring. This is stupid. I don't, I'm not even American. So why the fuck would I care about the presidents of the United States? But I'm telling you, this is more interesting than any sort of schooling you'll ever get. Because both Louis C.K. and Shane Gillis are history buffs. They're very knowledgeable about history, specifically American history. So to hear two stand-up comics who are versed in American history talk about the presidents one by one and all the intricacies and every little you know detail about the presidents, it's so fucking captivating and interesting. By the time I got to part four, I was itching for more but there's no more that's all you get and you know what that is a good thing sometimes people push it sometimes people push it when it comes to putting out whatever um they when it, let's just use tv shows for instance they get to season five or season six and it you know it's an amazingly popular show and uh, the producers or whoever are like, okay, we're making so much money off this. Let's drag this the fuck out for season seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And by the time it gets to that point, even even if it gets past season six, you're like, okay, now you're just fucking reaching for whatever the fuck you can grab just to make money. So when something ends at the high point. That is beautiful, and I love it. It's the same as what Quentin Tarantino is doing with his movies. He's doing 10 movies, and then he's out. Boom. Uh, so he's got one more movie left. 
And so that's I'm comparing that to this. You've got four episodes. And how often do you see a podcast series? I mean, it, I guess I shouldn't say how often. It does happen every now and then. You do see certain things. Um, like, for instance, uh, Sal Volcano and uh, ooh, Joe DeRosa, their Taste Buds podcast. They'll do like parts, part one, two, three, or four of like, their tiered selection of certain snack foods or whatever that they're doing. Um, by the way, since we're speaking of uh, taste buds, the No Press Network is taking a break from podcasting. They're too busy right now, and they're going on a hiatus, which is so... I hate to see it, man. I hate it when it, it doesn't happen often. Usually people who have a podcast, especially when it comes to stand-up comedians, they stick to the consistent schedule and they don't stop. And if they do stop, they'll just stop for like a week or so and come back. Or if they need to, uh, if they need the time, they will bank episodes and then put them out here and there, which is, which is what, um, uh, we might be drunk with uh, Mark Normand and Sam Morrell. They actually, they consistently bank episodes. Every time you watch a brand new episode of We May, We Might Be Drunk, you're watching an episode that's like was recorded like four weeks ago, which I kind of don't like because there's it, the the brand new episodes are so far behind the current events. But it's still fucking fantastic podcast but we're not talking about that we're talking about matt and shane's secret podcast episode 393 to 396 the presidents now i don't give a fuck what you think about louis ck all right fuck cancel culture and all that shit was baloney um louis is one of my all-time favorite fucking comics to ever live he is so fucking brilliant with everything he does i also recommend louis tv show that he wrote directed produced himself called louis which is also available on his website amongst every piece of content he's ever created at a very very low cost i think if you pay 25 bucks you get the entire six seasons and like another 25 bucks you get every single stand-up special he's ever created it's such a bargain and it's it's on my bucket list to pay and get that because once you get it you have it for for life i think it's it's either you stream it or download it but either way you get it for life and it's i highly fucking recommend it it's his tv show is so fucking good dude it's so good because louis the kind of guy that doesn't want to get involved with the big hollywood producers he wants to do it all himself and that is what makes it great so as I was saying, this this series on the on Matt and Shane's Secret Podcast, super engaging. I want to, sh so we're gonna start with a clip from it, just to give you kind of an idea. He's number three. That's O one to O nine. He was a two term guy. Adams was a Federalist. Washington was obviously independent. Jefferson was a Democratic Republican. He was the first Mister Pre President. Right when he got in, the French and the British started going to war. So everybody in America was like, fuck England. Also, France just helped us. Yeah. Fuck England. Let's join it. And he was he was okay, he one. loved the French. He loved the revolution in French. Yeah, he did. The, the Adams didn't because it was bloody and horrible. He didn't like the French. He didn't. And and uh, and Jefferson loved the revolution and he loved he had all these his friends over there. He spent a lot of his life there. Yeah. Just a little segment. I'm not going to show you a big portion of it, but I just want you to get an idea of how this episode is filmed because as you can see well ep each episode they're in like a different location which is also great and i think by the fourth episode if i remember correctly they're actually in like louis i don't know if it's his house or if it's like a cottage but it's a beautiful from what you can see a beautiful house and outside the window which i actually think i have a clip of it but outside the window there's like a forest and it's so nice but in episode one, like, look at who we've got here. We've got Matt and Shane. Okay, Shane right now is, like, 
one of the biggest comedians there is out there. And by the way, I'm going to go see him live in Edmonton at the outdoor, what is it called? The Great Outdoor Comedy Fest or something, which I can't fucking wait. Him and Andrew Schultz. I probably won't be able to get any footage of it. Well, maybe I will because it's an outdoor show. I don't know if they'll let you film though. I can't imagine. And if I do film, I'm only going to film a little bit. I definitely want to put something on this podcast to show that I was there. But yeah, so Shane is like huge right now. And then you've got Louis C.K., who is by far one of the biggest fucking legends in the stand-up comedy world ever. Okay? He's a huge name. All right? And we just got these guys sitting in like a living room with like papers on the table there's they're on a couch Louis in it actually I think this might even be Louis house because I'm seeing like awards up here like there's like two Emmys or Grammys not Grammys I don't know what the fuck those awards are but those are like prestigious awards are they not (laughs) and they're just sitting there like on top of a what is that a piano maybe that's not a piano but there's like a guitar a chessboard so this must be Louis' house as well. Maybe they did every episode at Louis' house. They don't establish it. But it's so cool. To just imagine having two Emmys and they're just sitting on a shelf with a bunch of junk all around it, you know? It's such a cool dynamic. It just really, it makes, it really humanizes these huge names. You know, Matt McCusker is a big name too, but he's not nearly as big as Shane and Louis, especially not Louis. So to just see them fucking chilling out in this messy apartment looking place is so fucking cool. That alone is appealing. But then when you actually listen to them, you're like, oh, wow, this is so intriguing. And you don't want to stop. Um, yeah, so I guess here, here's the clip. Where's it at here? Oh, it's a different episode? Fuck. Okay, yeah, so here's episode four. By this point, uh, Matt is, for some reason, not involved anymore. I don't know. He had to left. They might have addressed it. It's actually been a while since I've seen this. And look, there's more fucking awards back here. I don't know if he's just purposely putting them in the shot. They might actually be moving them around at each one. I never noticed that. But there might even be just more. Maybe he's just got a whole bunch, and they're just all over his house. But look at how cool the scenery is. It's just like dense forest. And it's like fall, so there's leaves all over the ground. And these nice fucking stained glass windows. It's beautiful. So let's just watch this clip. He's CIA, man. Yes, he was supposed to run. He was supposed to win. But this is when I started to believe in this country. Was when Clinton ran for president. Because, and again, not based on politics even. But how dug in Reagan and Bush felt. And Bush just felt like, you ain't going to beat this guy with nothing. These guys are in there. And there's Dick Cheney in there. And um, and Donald Rumsfeld. These fucking guys are like, these are hard-ass fucking guys who don't bleed. You just don't believe they bleed. And they got it all worked out. And they've been there for 12 fucking years. Yeah. Yeah. So... See, the thing, like, even just watching that right now, I'm like, oh, fuck, I want to pause this podcast and just continue to watch this podcast. But we can't do that now, can we? You guys got (laughs) any bags of bird ham in here? (laughs) We ran out of bird ham. Jackpot. Jackpot. That's what I was saying when I found this series. I said to myself, I'm going to be set for a few days. I've got fucking content, dude. I could listen to those guys talk about American history forever. You know, if they created a show, I would be all in it. Um, And the, the, the cool thing about it is like Shane is Shane's the kind of guy who doesn't prepare for anything. Even with his stand-up comedy, he doesn't write his stand-up comedy. He's never written anything down. It's just all in his head. And he just goes up on stage and does it. So to see him like sit down and work and talk to Louie about stuff, you just really get to see how his mind works. 
It's fucking, it's great. Um, yeah. So I guess that's, that's kind of it in a nutshell. Um, I'm still kind of wondering, I'm still kind of, I'm still kind of on the fence about this format of the show. You know, I gotta, I gotta let it play out for a while and see how I like it. But I don't know how I feel about it, dude. I kind of miss the old ways of how I did it, where it was just raw. And I went into it with just my bullet points and riffed off of everything. It's kind of, there's kind of too much structure here. I'm following note after note. And I don't know if that's good. You know, I don't know if I, I don't know, dude, because uh, when I got this idea, I was like, fuck, yeah, this is what I'll do. And although it does take up time and, you know, we're already like 30 minutes into the podcast. Yeah. You know, we're getting into the second place winner, but I don't know, dude. I don't know. We'll try it. We'll keep trying it. Um, anyway, so that is the second or the, sorry, the third place winner of the week is Matt and Shane's secret podcast featuring Louis CK four part series called the presidents episode 393 to 390. (laughs) Don't touch each other, please. Don't touch each other. Yep. Yeah. Sure um. Now let's talk about s- some people who fell off. Remember, you know Bevo, fucking Bevo, dude. He fell off the fucking train. I guess he's broke now, because <laughs> he's he ran out of content. He's got nothing left to do. He doesn't want to eat anymore because it's not cutting it. And we all kind of knew this was going to happen, you know? He, his whole thing was just like, he swallowed food weird, all right? He went viral. He got, he was all over the other podcasts featured on there. Um, And then he just tried to run off those coattails. He was making money, showing up to clubs as like a guest appearance, but I guess now he's uh, completely fallen off the bandwagon. Is that the right term? No. He, he's he got no money. He's got no money and his girlfriend that he was seeing is now leaving him, I guess. Uh, and he's basically begging for people to help him out at this point. What's up, you guys? This is Bevo here. I just wait to do another updated video on the current overdraft. Um, yeah, big up to all, everyone that's basically gifted a penny, a pound, a fiver, 10p, 20p, all the pennies count. You know the rules. Um, yeah. Look at all the pennies times. people are giving. I'm gonna go down there. They're the, just giving uh, them a cent. To basically pawn in the chain and the watch. Um, I might even sell my Burberry on Vinted. So if you want me to make a Vinted, let me know down below. But, um, but yeah, it's been tough. It's been tough. Me and Sophia have been arguing. Um, yeah, the fall off is real, guys. You wanted it, it's happened. I'm not enjoying <laughs> it, I'm not going to lie. You wanted it, it's happening. It is what it is. I mean, Bevo's broke. Bevo's here, Bevo's there, Bevo's broke everywhere. But um, yeah, make sure to support me. Get over to the Twitch. If you want to donate me a penny, I don't mind as well. But yeah, twitch.tv slash Bevo. Um, Frios. Try and make some money on there. But yeah, I've got to do something, guys. So I need to make bread. I- Dude, he's 750 pounds is his overdraft limit. And he's at negative 711 pounds. So he's getting pretty close to reaching his limit. Um, but everyone's just giving him one cent. You're just going one cent, Bevo. Is that his name? Beavis Brandon? There's no way. What's the most... So the most current... This is the one that I saw first. But yeah, this one. Hey, this is TikTok Bevo here. I just want to say thank you for everyone for the gifts, the donations. I've had some money um, to basically try and find Sophia. Sophia's gone on a mad one. 
I don't know where she's gone. She thinks I'm home. Um, she's gone, she's dude. Embarrassed with me or don't want to be associated with me anymore. I know my girl mates didn't like me. Um, if anyone has seen her, let me know. Um, I'll come to see her to see if she was at home, but she's not. Her mum and dad are very worried as well. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know what to do, but it's a stressful time. I'm not even making money on TikTok. My RPM's like 10p. It's a joke. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go live later to raise some money. I'm literally going home to Manny now. Hopefully she's there. She's not answering the phone. Um, if anyone's been in contact or seen her, she's even blocked me on TikTok. I don't even know what to do. I don't even know if she's posting because I haven't got other accounts. But yeah, it's, uh, it's looking shit at the minute. I don't know what to do. I really don't know what to do. But big up everyone. I really do appreciate it. Big up all the messages. So there's two there's two ways to look at it. One, he this this is actually happening. He is broke as fuck, which is very super believable. Uh and he's struggling, obviously. Or he is struggling, but he's not struggling as bad as he says he is, and he's just doing all this as kind of like a publicity stunt to get more awareness towards him. Maybe his girlfriend isn't actually gone. She, there, you know, this totally could be. And if that's the case, he's a fucking brilliant motherfucker. But if it's not the case, I kind of feel bad for him, I guess. You have to. Because what's that he got? Just imagine being in his situation, all right? Going viral. Being on all kinds of other people's podcasts, featured on shows, fucking getting paid to show up to clubs as a guest fucking appearance. He said in one of his other videos that I saw that the last club that he went to as a guest appearance, nobody showed up. <laughs> Not one person. So after that point, that's over. He doesn't get to do that anymore. But to be honest, as much as you feel bad for him, you got to be like, oh, well, fuck, dude. You spent all your money immediately buying fucking diamond chains and nice clothes and his fucking brand new teeth. Who knows how much that fucking cost, but he didn't know how to manage his money properly. And now he is uh, broke as a fucking joke. He is almost at his overdraft limit. And was that, that was the current update, I guess. The most current one. Yeah, so Sophia's gone. Whatever. So maybe we're going to have to keep updated on Bevo in the next episode. We're going to have to see what's going on with Bevo. We've got Bevo and fucking World of T-Shirts. And honestly, I could give a fuck about World of T-Shirts anymore. I'm going to stick to Bevo. This shit's way more interesting. A little fucking rat. <laughs> Swear shady. You know, unless something crazy happens to uh, World of T-Shirts, I probably won't be updating with him anymore. You know, Bevo's where it's at now. Bevo's where it's at. Because I, he's he was actually kind of an interesting cat, Bevo, but not really. You know, <laughs> he doesn't do much. I I I don't. Did he ever do that boxing thing that he was gonna do? I don't even know. I don't think he did. Oh, and you know what the other crazy thing is? Is he he copyrighted the term, you know the rules, didn't he? In the UK. And he got it tattooed on his arm. So it's like if he falls off, then what's going to go on with that fucking slogan? Dude, we got to keep updated on this. Should I donate to his link tree? How do you do that? Where is that at? Link tree, not his link tree, his fucking. How do you do it? Does he not have a link in here? I don't think so. What is this? Kick? Is he live? He's offline. You think he'd be on right now, just like begging for money? Well, who knows what time it is in the UK? How do you donate? Where's the donation thing? 
Twitter, YouTube, Twitch, Instagram. Hmm. Let me see here. Let me see if I can find it. I'm not necessarily going to donate, but I just want to see if I can find the link. It's not here. There's no way. Whatever. So that, that's just making me more uh, curious because it's like if I can't if I can't find the fucking link to donate, you know, if he's that desperate for money, um, then where the fuck do you send? Where do you send it? Where are people sending this? Does he What's say? What's up, you guys? This is Bevo here. I'll always do another updated video on the current over. Hold on. This is Sophia's page. Does Sophia have an update? When was this uploaded? Eight hours ago? She got nice boobies. But I don't know how I feel about her. So what? I don't know, dude. I don't know, dude. This whole thing might be fake. I'm kind of thinking it might be fake. What's up, you guys? Anyway. Uh, let's move on. Whoops. I'm pressing shit I shouldn't be pressing. All right, so second place winner. Second place winner of the week. Podcast of the week. Second place goes to... <sighs> Dan Soder on Ari Shafir's Skeptic Tank. Ooh. This is episode 265 of the Skeptic Tank, Bottom of the Tank. These were episodes that uh, Ari Shafir uploaded later on, way, way, way longer than, like years later after they were actually uh, uploaded or recorded or whatever and uh so basically this is an uh, this is so it's an audio only episode which you know i don't know how you feel about audio only episodes they sometimes can suck they sometimes are great uh but this is one that you don't need to watch you don't really need to watch most podcasts but you know podcasts like howie mandel or h3 those are completely visual podcasts. This is too for the most, well, not for the most part, but for certain parts. But this is a great audio on the episode. If you're going to the gym, if you're doing dishes, if you're mowing the lawn, whatever you need to pop something in to listen to, do this episode. Because not only is Dan Soder the fucking man, but Ari Shafir is fucking awesome as well. Ari Shafir is the kind of guy where at first glance you're like, I don't know how I feel about this guy. He's kind of weird. He's kind of obnoxious. He's kind of gross at times. But you have to really give him a chance, like a lengthy chance. And then once you do, you're like, oh, my God, uh, he's actually fucking awesome. He's he's like He's, a, he's actually a really nice guy. Despite the things that you've seen him do on the internet, he's really nice. He's a good listener. And he's a fucking, he's a great podcaster. And he has great ideas for his podcast. He's, he's one of those out-of-box thinkers who doesn't just turn on a camera and talks, which I'm not saying is a bad thing. He, but he just goes outside of that. Um... And then, uh, so you combine Ari Shafir with Dan Soder, and Dan Soder is such a fucking good storyteller, okay? Not only is he just naturally gifted at being funny, it doesn't matter what he's talking about, he can be funny, but he's also a great storyteller, which are the two main things that you would expect to see from a stand-up comic. And he has such a great combination of both, and he has a cool voice. His voice is really fun to listen to. Um, so I just want to show you a clip from this episode. Now, like I said, it is an audio only episode, but the visuals that Ari Shafir does, like I said, he's just out of the box thinker. Let me just show you here. 
Okay. So this, this is what you're watching. Hold on. Let me turn up the fucking quality here. Okay. Look at this. Okay. So once I click play, you're going to see this Ari Shafir. This is Ari Shafir. You're going to see this moving and you'll see the background of the window moving. That's, that's the whole episode is just this. Okay. But if you look around here, there's a picture of Dan Soder on a, on a forklift. That is something he talks about in this episode. Actually, let me preface. This whole episode revolves around Dan Soder way bef before he even got into stand-up comedy. Him working in Alaska, uh, living at like his aunt's house or something, like right at a college or at a high school. Again, it's been a bit since I've seen this one. But the whole episode is, is that revolves around that his time in Alaska working as a dock worker. So you get to, you get to hear what they, what Dan Soder was doing before he even got into stand-up comedy. And you've got an hour and 50 minutes of this and it's, it's so great to listen to. You really get to hear about who he was. So you, you see everything that's going on here, like the weed with the knives, the Captain Morgan, the salmon, the pills, the weed plant, the knots, the picture up here, the fish, the toilet paper, another picture, the lighters, the Snapple, eh, the books, everything you see here is, uh, was mentioned in the episode. So as you're watching the episode, you'll hear little snippets. Like for instance, you'll hear about the Captain Morgan. And then you'd be like, oh, there's the Captain Morgan right there. It's so, it's such a cool concept. You don't see anything like this. But anyway, here's a quick clip. Burn or some yeah. shit. There was an ammonia leak one day at lunch, and we'd always do knife hits at lunch. Yeah, so what are the knife it. hits? <laughs> it's like where you warm up two butter knives. Yeah. I told you, then you yeah. dip it. We'd do those at lunch. We'd just get fucking blasted. Dip it into what? Into a, like a, like a, anything plastic. Like you could take a plastic water bottle yeah. we took a fifth of captain morgan's a plastic one and cut out the bottom like real trash and then let the smoke go into that yeah then you take the knives and you press them together with the weed on it and it burns up and then you like with the canister use it as they called it the huffer wait what did you use the canister how did you like so the fifth thing the plastic you cut the bottom out you put the knives in there and then press it oh uh, so and then you it suck it out the, yeah it contains oh. the smoke okay yeah because that's yeah. the chamber. Yeah. Anyway, you get the point. So he's talking about doing hot knives with weed through a Captain Morgan bottle with the bottom cut open. So look, you got the butter knives, the weed, and the Captain Morgan bottle here. Okay? That's just one um, instance of this. Every, every little thing you see in this picture here is one of the key moments of the whole story. So I just thought that was really cool. As you can see, this was recorded in 2016, but it was uploaded only three years ago. Does it say when? July 14th, 2021. So that's why these are called the bottom of the tank, I think, because they're just, they're old episodes that he re-uploaded. But it's a fucking fantastic episode. You get to hear Dan Soder's life before he was a stand-up comic, which I love I love it when stand-up comics tell you about their life before they get into stand-up comedy. It's so interesting to listen to. Uh, you just hear their humble beginnings. It's so captivating. Um, yeah, I mean, that's really it for this one. That's that's why this one's in second place. It's one of my favorites, honestly. Like I, There's a few podcasts that I go back to listen to every now and then. Like Every few years, I'll be like... I want to listen to this one again. The this one and uh, another one with Mark Normand, Skeptic Tank, great episode to listen to. But that's that's for another episode. And I am fucking hungry. Sparshetti and meat sauce. God, I could, I would fucking devour some sparshetti and meat sauce right now. Shut your fucking mouth! Shut your fucking mouth! You don't know. Shut your fucking. Honestly, this new format of this podcast. It feels like I'm doing a fresh, brand new podcast, you know? This feels like episode one of the Dynamite Gizmo podcast because it's so 
new now. I've got such a new concept, which is kind of nice. It's kind of nice, but we've done 205 of them, so it's a little different. <laughs> anyway, have you been seeing these candy salad videos roaming around on the internet? There's so many. First, there was just one. And now it's like everybody's doing it. What is with these trends? How do they pop off so fast? I don't know if they pop off so fast. Like they just come in and know it's like one person decides to do something and they upload it, they go viral. And then it's like everybody wants to do it. And when I say everybody, I mean like young people, old people, fat people, ugly people, disabled people, whatever. They all jump on the trend because the internet is so accessible now. You know, back in the day when something, when a cool trend would happen, it would only stick with the young folk. But now the old folk are getting involved. And I'm specifically talking about these candy salad videos where there's a lineup of people. There's a big bowl on a table. And one by one, the person comes by and goes, hi, my name is whatever. And I brought whatever. And then they pour it into the bowl. The next person comes and yada, yada, so on and so forth. Ander Dingus. Who the fuck names their kid Ander Dingus? If you don't know what I'm talking about, just look it up. It's another candy salad. But this one showed up. It's like a fucking old folks. Hi, my name is Aaron, and I'm bringing my Werther's Carmel Candies. Nice. That's not what they're called, though. It's Werther's Originals. Mm hmm. My name is Shame, and I'm dumping cough drop candy. I, why does he say ready? You know, dude, you don't have to say ready and go forward. The camera has been recording. The guy in front of you already went. Okay. I mean, I well, can't blame him. The guy's like 109. You ready? Mm -hmm. dude, we're ready. My name is Shame, and I'm shame. Does he say his name is Shame? My name is Shame. I'm bringing Werther's Carmel Candies. You ready? Mm hmm My name is Shame. Shame. And I'm dumping cold drop candy from Walgreens. It's kind of Russian. I'm, I'm dropping cold drop candy from Walgreens. Oh, look My at this. name is Steve, and I brought nice, nice um, fruit-flavored candy. Hell yeah. I like those. Hi, my name is Peter, and I brought Metamucil Fiber Capsules. Metamucil, like, is, this is a joke, right? <laughs> Hello there, my Peter. name is Maurice, and I have dried plums. <laughs> See, this guy, dried Come plums. on out, come on out, boys. There it is. My name is Joseph, and I brought some Save Our Travel Sweets Lemon Candy. There was, like, two in there. So, yeah, this one's, like... Do old people actually eat that shit, you know? The, there's the old people candy, right? Everyone knows old people candy. That's the definition of old people candy. The only thing they were missing, missing were those little licorice fucking things. You know those weird licorice candies that are like black spheres with like a white center? Or like a there's pink ones with black centers? What is it with old people and those candies? Do you just reach a certain age and then you just eat those disgusting, like the worst fucking candy on the planet? Do your taste buds just change at a certain age where you no longer like nerd clusters and you're eating fucking uh, whatever the like prunes? Like what the hell? And the Metamucil? What and do they the got Steve going on? And I brought Actually, nice, nice um, fruit flavored candy. This guy. His fruit fla those fruit flavor candies, those looked okay. Steve knows what's up. Everyone else though, like this guy, fucking shame. What a shame got for us. My name is Shame, and I'm dumping cold drop candy from Walgreens. Cold drop? Like what is that? Like, like, like halls? Like cough medicine? The Werther's are okay, but still, 
That is like the number one associated candy with old people is Werther's Originals. This guy's over here fucking pants up to his tits with Metamucil in his hands. Shame's got a Domino's pizza hat on, ready to go deliver some pizzas after this with his three teeth in his head. My name is Andrew Dingus. Anyway. Pretty cool, right? Pretty fucking cool that we have a trend. I love trends. Actually, I usually don't like trends. They're usually stupid. And this is still pretty stupid. But I'm thinking whoever orchestrated this, they knew what was up. I was going to say something else, but I decided not to. Honestly, my first watch, my first go around with this, I was like, oh, this is old folks doing it. And then as the people went on, I was like, wait, are they old and mentally disabled? Or are they just old? And then you get to a point halfway through the video and you're like, oh, no, they're just old. They're just old. Because <laughs> once you get to the end, then then some normies come back out. And by the way, this guy isn't even that old. I don't know what he's doing there. He's got keys. I think he might be the janitor. This guy's not part of the old folks' home. This guy for sure is. <laughs> also, by the way, why do old people have to wear their pants so high? What's going on? What's with What's with this? What's going on here? Why do they do that? Like, for real. You get to a certain age, your tongue sticks out of your mouth, your pants are up to your tits, and you eat the most disgusting candy there is. Why is that? But yeah, this guy, this guy doesn't look that old. But like I said, he's got like a thousand keys on his belt, so I'm thinking he's the janitor. And he's just there. Or like a maintenance man. And they're like, hey, you want to be in a video? And he's like, fuck yeah, I do. Is it the candy salad? <laughs> the water. Hello there, my you name brought is fruits. Bruce. And I have dried plums. Plums. <laughs> dried Come on plums. out. Come on out, boys. There it is. Come on out, boys. <laughs> dried plums. Meh, not, that, not too bad, I guess, actually. Dried prunes, not so great. Dried plums, okay, I can get on board with that. But if you look, like his bag is half eaten. This guy's, that's like half the bottle there. So I'm thinking these guys just grabbed whatever they had in their little fucking dorm at the old folks' home. This was pro it's like this maintenance man here. What was his name again? I bet he just had that in his lunch. He was there that day to fix the plumbing or something, and he had some prunes in his fucking lunch kit. And they're like, hey, you want to be in this video? And he's like, hell yeah, I do. And brought out the plums. Hello there, my name is Maurice. And I <laughs> Hello there, my name is Maurice. I have dried plums. Yeah. <laughs> Come on out. Come on out, boys. Come on out, boys. <laughs> My name's Joseph, and I brought some Save Our Travel Sweets lemon candy. What does that? Save by Travel... What is that? Save by Travel Sweets lemon candy? I don't know. Um, okay, that's enough of that. We don't need to see any more fucking candy fucking... Did rednecks kill your folks? What is that called again? How did I forget already? Candy salad. Uh, this was one that... Uh, <laughs> this is one that showed up on my page. And I... It's another one of those fucking challenge videos, unfortunately. But it's honestly fucking hilarious. <laughs> I laughed quite hard when I saw it. Um, it's a trust test. And who better person to trust than your wife? Um, as we can see here. So it's a five second clip. So 
pay attention because it's going to go by quick. We might watch it a couple times. We'll just watch it one more time after this because I want to move on to the number one spot before we go too long into this because we still got the honorable mention. But let's go. Uh, trust test with wife. I trust my wife. <laughs> the slap is so hard. It's so, it's so violent. I trust my wife. <laughs> like she couldn't have hit him more dead on in the face. <laughs> okay, and we're just I'm going to move on, but just watch. Once she hits him, let me scroll ahead here. Oh, she look fucking biting her lip winding right up she's really trying her hardest to aim for that cup and she smashes him right in the fucking face bam oh that's gotta fucking hurt dude but look at her look at her look how concerned she is oh no i hit right in the face <laughs> look at her face oh i can't zoom in but oh man can I zoom in here? Yeah. Look at that. She is very concerned. <gasps> they got a divorce immediately after this. Ladies and squintlemen, we are on to our first place winner. Pog, top three podcasts of the week. First place winner goes to... I don't even remember. Dr. Phil Live. Featuring Dak Shepard, Sal Volcano, and Rick Glassman. Ba 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 ba. What a great episode. Um, Adam Ray, like I said last episode, Adam Ray and Harlan Williams are like number one for me right now for stand up comics. Highly, highly fucking recommend watching Adam Ray, specifically the Dr. Phil Live Adam Ray. It's so effing good dude it's so good okay there's not a lot of live podcasts out there as we know fucking we got kill tony but the other one we got dr phil live check it the fuck out dude god it's good this episode specifically though because you got dax shepherd sal Volcano, and rick glassman rick glassman is like one of adam ray's best friends I don't know if I established yet, but Adam Ray plays Dr. Phil. Like he dresses up as Dr. Phil, plays a character and does a live podcast. Rick Lassman is one of uh, one of Adam Ray's best friends. So to have them on the show together is just great. And Sal's making fucking waves nowadays. Dax has an amazing podcast, which I've never actually seen an episode of, but I might consider it. I might consider it. And I should also mention... Like I said, Harlan Williams and Adam Ray are like number one for me right now. But Rick Glassman is also up there as well. Rick Glassman is, when he talks about things, you know, with his autism that he has, he's so precise. He gets through every little detail of whatever the fuck topic he's going on about. And he, and he doesn't forget you know how people go off on tangents on podcasts? They're talking about one thing, then they get distracted by a question, and then they completely veer off from what they were talking about. And as an audience member listening, you're like, oh no, go back to what you were talking about, please. I wanted to hear what you had to say. And then they never go back to it. And it's frustrating. That is not an issue with Rick Glassman. When he's talking about something and he gets distracted... He, it's like he just kind of like has compartments in his head. He, he, he gets distracted, but then the thing he was talking about, he puts over in this compartment and he'll, he'll go off on the distraction, but he'll always come back to that compartment. He's so good at it. He's, and he's just, he's quick with every fucking thing. You don't get to see that aspect of him on this episode because it's not centered around Rick. But him on Take Your Shoes Off, which is his, which is his own podcast, you really get to see that. Um, but seeing all those guys together, the fucking 
the coagulation of all three of them together on this is, oh, it's beautiful, dude. It's so good. Uh, but that wasn't the only aspect of this episode. At, in, in the first bit, the first quarter of the episode, um, Dr. Phil, Adam Ray, brings out a fucking magician on stage. Um, now, I should also mention the Dr. Phil character that Adam Ray plays... Uh, he's so good at shitting uh, on audience members. So good at it. And when he does it as the Dr. Phil character, he gets away with it because you're not associating, you're not associating it directly with Adam Ray. You're associating it with Dr. Phil. So he can say whatever the fuck he wants up there. And it's even more funnier. So to have a professional legit comedian on stage with a magician is such a unique interesting concept that you don't ever get to see when do you ever see a stand-up comedian and a magician perform on stage it's always either one or the other they do get plunked into the same sort of entertainment category where they're kind of like an offshoot form of entertainment they both do things on stage entertaining people by themselves so to see a magician and a stand-up comic together, oh, it's lovely. And I have a clip of it here, just a quick clip, just to kind of show you the dynamic of those two together. Let me just turn up the fucking quality here. We want 4K for this. Uh, who's, a, who's a skeptic? I need a skeptic. Where's a skeptic? Some... Oh, this, this gentleman guy... right here looks How great. How you doing? Okay. What is your name? Okay, have we talked to him yet in the show? No, but I think he played for the Bulls in 1992. Yeah. <laughs> Aren't you Bill Wennington? <laughs> All right, five of you got that. Google Bill Wennington tonight on the drive home and then remember back to right now. Blake, you're a real person. You're not a plant. You're a real person. Yeah. Will you stand up real quick? Can I ask you something personal? Sure. Do you remember your first crush? Your first, like, elementary school crush? Don't you fucking lie, Blake. <laughs> yeah. Who was it? Like her name? Yeah. <laughs> no, her address, you dumb fuck. <laughs> be honest, be honest. Be Sorry, honest. Sorry, Justin. No. Go ahead, Blake. Jennifer what? Jennifer, I don't remember her last name. You do. Come on. Think hard. Jennifer what? White. <laughs> White. Why'd you have to bring race into this, Blake? <laughs> See? See? Okay, because now this, the magician could do that, but a magician is not really an improviser. They do improvise, don't get me wrong, but their goal is to do magic. So to have those lulls in the act allows for Dr. Phil to come in and just fucking snipe. <laughs> and do you see how hard he shits on them? He can get away with it because he's Dr. Phil. He could do it as Adam Ray, but it's so much more funnier as the Dr. Phil character. And and that's just that's just the beginning of the show. The show would have been great if it was if that was it, if it was just Dr. Phil and that magician. But then it then that's just the first half. And then the second half, you got Dak Shepard, Sal Volcano, and Rick Glassman. That's why this shit takes first place this week. Because it's it's fucking incredible. You would want, and I, to be honest, this isn't even a podcast. I don't even, this isn't, it, I guess it's not, it's not a podcast. What am I even saying? This isn't a podcast. It's literally just a show. And what am I, I don't even know why I put this in first place because it's technically not a podcast, but it's Adam Ray, it's podcast, it, it, it falls into there, it falls into there. Now that I think about it, it's not a podcast, it shouldn't even be on this list, but I have to, because it kind of is, so it has to be. God, that's, that's actually, this is bullshit now, I'm thinking about it, it shouldn't be in first place, because it's technically not a podcast, but fuck it, it's too late now. <laughs> Um, but we were talking about Rick being good at remembering things and always recalling them. Adam Ray is, 
is good at that when he's on stage. He's not good at that when he's doing podcasts, but he's good at that on stage, especially when he does this Dr. Phil thing. Because he talks to so many audience members in the beginning of the show. That's part of it. That's part of the act. He talks to audience members of the beginning so that he can recall them throughout the entire show. And he does it very well. He always remembers the audience members' names and he always remembers the things that he talked to them about. So he's also very good at logging stuff. Um, but let me just show you a clip later on in the episode uh, between when, 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 when Dax, Sal, and Rick come out on stage. <laughs> now this I like. <laughs> Put up the kind bar. <laughs> Rick, what sort of snacks do you eat when you're uh, at home by yourself? Or even with friends? Two separate things. I myself dried mango exclusively. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'm with Rick. That like felt this. like monkey box. I, I covered it like this. Okay. I, 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 all right. Dried mango, go man, go. Who's that? That's the brand name? Thank, yeah. Okay. Go, go man, go, dried mango. It's the most consistently soft. Okay. And then when I'm with friends, donuts. <laughs> what? <laughs> Can I... <laughs> Can I, can I ask you were a, there. Oh, tons of donuts. Can I ask a follow-up? What's wrong with hard mango? You said Go Go Gadget Mango has <laughs> the best mango. Phil, but go man go, because man go is how you spell mango. So it's go mango, but the, the, G, the last oh. G is capital, so they make it look like go man go. So it's like Togo's. To go, you want your sandwich yeah. to go? You ever do that? You ever walk into a Togo's? The story gets better. You ever walk into a Togo's? <laughs> And you go, hey, I'll take that, sand, that turkey ranch in Swiss to go. And they go, why don't you just get the fuck out of here right now? <laughs> We've heard that joke today. Uh, Sal, Dax, what about you guys? You're both fathers, which is exciting. Give it up for two dads right here, huh? <laughs> two, hot, two hot dads. This is our first show with two hot dads. Oh, man, it's an honor. It's, I mean, it's great to be here with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, go men go. Everybody. Rick, shut the fuck up for a second. <laughs> Actually, that was very funny. One more time for Rick Glassman for coming out. Uh, <laughs> very funny. Uh, so, so mean, isn't that just for first day? <laughs> yeah, I'll take it from here, Rick. Dad <laughs> right? Very nice. I guess you could. I guess you could argue this is a podcast. They all have mics, right? They all have mics. They're all talking to each other about bullshit. And that's what they're doing the entire episode. So I guess it could still fall into a podcast. I don't know. Whatever that takes. So that's uh, first place winner. Uh, so we'll take a look at our chart here. Who we got so far. So third place, second place, and first place. Not bad. Not a bad, not a bad uh, top three. Am I right? Okay. Before we move on to the honorable mention, I got one clip to show you. And then we'll go on to the honorable mention. I'm still fucking talking too much about these. It is a podcast. You're supposed to talk. It's okay to talk. But I don't, I, I drag them on a little too long, I think. I guess it's only been an hour 17, but I'm not used to doing podcasts this long. Usually they only go 40 minutes to about an hour. It's really wake, beep, 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 beep. Really uses up my time doing this, but that's okay what we need i don't even know what this is actually i think i remember let's check it out oh my god Juice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. this shit's so stupid <laughs> just because it says one it's fucking good right how's he doing that i don't like that the fridge is left open this whole time i used to get in trouble for leaving the fridge open and he is he just keeps going <laughs> can't do it <laughs> He's really dragging it out. Does he have Hellman's in a bag? Is that what that was? Look at that. Wait, he's got like mayonnaise. 
I can't see it. Is that mayonnaise in a bag? Is that isopropyl alcohol? What the heck? That is may that's mayonnaise. It says mayonnaise. He's got mayonnaise in a bag. Dung 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 dung. Dung 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 dung. This should have been the opening clip. Would have been way funnier. I might get rid of the honorable mention. Like the whole segment. Like, do we really need first, second, third, and an honorable mention? And a podcast recommendation? Like, it might be too much. Because we we did first, second, third, and we're far into this. I don't, yeah, I think, I don't even, yeah. No more honorable mention. Yeah, no more, no. Actually, you know what? We'll do the honorable mention, but I'm not going to talk about it. Does that work? Because I have points here to talk about. Ah, Maybe I should just get rid of the honorable mention altogether. Ah, I like it. I like it, but I don't like it. You know, it's too much. Yeah, fuck it. No more honorable mention. It's too, it's too much. Right? I don't need that many. We're getting rid of it. I'm not even going to do it. So, well, actually, since I already have it prepared, I will, but uh, I'm not going to talk about it. So, our honorable mention is Harry Mack on the Take Your Shoes Off podcast. Go check it out. You won't regret it. Trust me. Maybe that's all we got to do. Don't talk about it. Don't show a clip. Nothing. Harry Mack on Take Your Shoes Off podcast. You won't regret it. Check it the fuck out. I don't know. I'll see how it goes later on. Okay. And then the podcast recommendation of the week is, again, Ari Shafir takes it it takes it up. Uh, Ari Shafir has a new podcast called We Be Trippin'. The concept is he brings guests on the show and they talk about trips that they've went on across the world to different countries. Uh, it's called We Be Trippin' because they, they, he also likes to talk about the different drugs and whatever they they did. So not only are they going on a trip, but they're, they're tripping balls. It's a cool concept. Check it out for sure. All right. Um, get into some UFC updates. I mean, there's nothing really other than... Because we still haven't gotten to uh, UFC 303 yet. I made my predictions last episode. Uh, the only difference is between then and now, um, there's been um, an update to the card. Um, uh, Anthony Smith, I believe his name, was supposed to fight someone and his fucking fight got changed now he's fighting someone else now I'm still voting for Smith I think that I vote I must have voted for Smith so I'm still voting for him uh, but the only really uh, UFC update I have is this I saw this and I was like holy fuck is this for real I think Alex Pereira Pieta is learning English speak English for me teacher is low is low I understand better. Wow. Unreleased content. So New character surprised. unlocked. Really good. <laughs> good. Very good. See? New character unlocked. English speaking polytonic. <laughs> I think he's learning English. Which is fucking awesome. It's crazy to think that this guy is so widely renowned in the UFC community. Not only for fucking dominating the sport and competing so often, winning two belts with only nine fights under his belt. That sounded weird. Winning two belts with only nine belts. 
he, obviously he's an amazing fucking dominating fighter, uh, but he doesn't speak any English. And he's like on top of the world in the UFC game. Everybody knows him. And not only does everybody know him, but everybody finds him fucking hilarious. You never see that. When people get fame in the UFC world, it's because they, because, you know, their personality and their fighting and whatever, but they always either speak English already or they eventually learn English. Okay. But he still doesn't know English. And he's still, I love him and everybody loves him. All right. And it's like subtitles is all we need. And even without subtitles, all he says is Chama and huh? <laughs> and it's, it's so fucking fun and funny. And the memes he's in and he's a part of the memes and he understands the memes and he plays into them. He's just the fucking best, dude. So he's the fucking best. The fight night with fucking Whitaker and whoever that was. I didn't watch it. I wanted to, but there was too much shit going on this weekend for me, so I couldn't watch it. It sucks to see Johnny Walker get fucking knocked out again, okay? Because I love Johnny Walker. But I'm coming to realize he's not that great of a fighter, I guess. But he's hilarious. He's got a great personality. Like, he is legit funny. Like, he's like the he's like the Jim Carrey of this of the UFC world. The way he acts. He's always, like, pretending to trip and fucking making weird faces. And he's a fucking goofball. Absolute goofball. And that's why I've come to love him. And I remember seeing his first fight. I don't remember what card it was, but... Yeah, he's just... It sucks seeing him... Uh, fail over and over again because I really because it's nice to see a goof succeed but I guess he's too goofy can't do it so I guess we'll see um, next week after uh, next week's episode we'll see if my predictions were right if you want it and now the fight prediction card that I created I should probably show it right now let me show it the fight prediction card that I created, I create these for every UFC main card event. And I do it for some fight nights as well. Uh, but let me get it up here. Uh, here we go. Bapati boopati. Come on. Napashutu. Shapatete. Ratatu. Mbapatute. Here it is. It's a fight prediction card. So look what we got. Okay, whoops. Um, hold on. Here we go. So it gives you the odds, their name, the bout, um, the order in which they fight. You know, this is the first fight, second fight, third fight. You got their, the names of their country along the sides, plus their flags, and then their rank. And then, of course, a picture of them. And then there's a checkbox for voting and a checkbox for winner. So you can print these off. I created these, by the way. This is my creation. You print these off. You check off who you vote for. And then whoever's the winner, you check that off. And it's just you can have fun with your friends, you know, just to fuck around and be like, see who gets the most wins. Or you can actually use it for betting. And I've made these available on a Google Doc or a Google Drive. The link is in the description if you want to download and print these off. I put them in there every every main card. Um, so, yeah, feel free to click that link if you want these. Print them off and uh, use them. Right. So, Anthony Smith was supposed to fight someone before. I don't remember who it was. Didn't know who it was. But now it's some guy named Dalidzi from Georgia. Uh, odds are still even. I haven't, the odds were even when I looked at the UFC site creating this. That was like the day that this got announced. I'll, the odds may have changed. Actually, let's go check right now if the odds have changed. UFC 303. 
They have not changed. Okay. So the odds are even. But I'm still picking uh, Anthony Smith. So we'll see next week how accurate I was. Um, yeah. So far, ever, I started the, making these UFC 300. And so far, I've been pretty damn accurate. I've only got a few wrong on both. So we'll see how I go on this one. My streak might end soon. Okay, so to end things off, I do have two videos of World of T-shirts. But like I said, do we really need an update on him? Like, I don't think so. So I'm just going to close them. We're done with we're done with World of T-shirts unless something fucking crazy happens with him. We're not going to do the Joshua block update anymore. And actually, that's what I'm going to use this card for. Uh, no more honorable mention. No more world of t-shirts all right we don't need it because we are an hour and 30 minutes into this fucking podcast lengthy dude lengthy actually there's some cuts and stuff here and there so i don't know what exactly time it is but it's around there anyway um is that it i think that's it yeah uh, that's it for this episode of the Dynamic Ismo Podcast, episode 205. Hope you enjoyed it. I don't care if you don't, but anyway, like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell. Uh, or don't. Like I said, I don't give a fuck. That's it for this episode. Bye!